Okay, in this lesson we'll be looking at uh, work by Rutherford, work that led him to investigate the structure of the atom. Um, we're going to talk about what was meant by the plum pudding model of the atom, which came before Rutherford, and, um, and look how Rutherford's work led to the nuclear model of the atom. So, can we start off, if you do want to just turn back, pause the video here, and try to have a go at doing the starter. What's the approximate size of the atom in metres, and the nucleus, and what's the definition of nice stuff? So, pause the video now, and get those in, and then we'll come back in a second. Okay, approximate size of the atom, we did this last lesson, you should have had 10 to the minus 10 metres. So, that's 0.0000001 no, 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 metres or one-tenth of a nanometer, because a nano is one-thousandth of a millionth. And the nucleus, you need to add a few more zeros in there, so the nucleus is much smaller, uh, one hundred thousand. So you've got an extra five zeros in there if you're going to put that in meters. The easiest way is to write 10 to the minus 15. And the definition of an isotope is Isotopes and nuclei that have the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. So all previous information there that you should have to, that you should already have. So in this lesson, I'm going to be using this model here uh, from FET. So please, you know, please go and have a look at it and see if you want to do it yourself. I would also recommend either before or after this video, go and have a look at this YouTube video. Uh, that's a really great video. I'll put a link to it in the description at the top. Um, it's a very more scientific method of looking at it. I'm going to try and give a little historical narrative and, and tell you the key things that you maybe need to know for your GCSE. So, let's have a go. Who are we looking at here? Well, this is J.J. Thompson. He was one of the greatest physicists of his day. Uh, so he was generally operating and working at the late 19th century. Um, and really, he's the man, he's most famous, I suppose, for discovering the electron. So he was the first person to isolate the electron and realise the electron had a negative charge. And it, was, and it could exist and, it could, you, and, he, and he could detect its behaviour and predict it. And he discovered that the negative charge of it. So he, he realised that this could be significant and he may came up with a structure of the atom. And here is the structure of the atom that Rutherford came up with. There's one representation, we'll see a couple more. And it's generally, you can see, it's, a, it's an atom, it's a, it's a, it's a circle, or in, in three dimensions it would be a sphere. And you can see the big positive charge here. He thought the atom was a big positive charge, and the electrons that he discovered inside the atom had negative charge and they balanced out the positive charge of the atom. So he christened this really the plum pudding model. And here we go, here's a sort of a, a version of a plum pudding. And they've made it very handily into a three-dimensional sphere for us to see. And this was very much Rutherford's view of, um, this was very much Thompson's view of the atom. So he coined this phrase. And the plum pudding model was inside the atom, which was really a sphere of solid positive charge. Yes, so a sphere of positive. And inside this positive sphere of charge, you had discrete separate electrons. There we go. They're in here. Oh, let me change my colour there. There's the electrons inside. There's the electrons inside. And... The electrons he imagined balanced out this positive charge of the rest of the cake, or the plum pudding, as he would have called it. Uh, so you can think of the atom being a positive charge, a solid sphere of positive charge, made up with discrete electrons inside it that had the negative charge. And overall, the positive charge cancelled out the negative charge, hence the atom was overall neutral. Um, so that's really fundamentally his model. Uh, that is Thompson's model of the atom. Uh, so along came a gentleman called Rutherford, and he was trying to investigate whether this model was true. So I'm going to move on and show you a what the explain the experiment that Rutherford did. So here's fundamentally what Rutherford did. 
he wanted to see whether the plum pudding model was true. So what he did, he took a radioactive source, which I've got here, called a uh, and this is an alpha source of. I haven't got my proper pen on me, but I'm going to put this right out as best I can with my mouse. An alpha source of radiation, and he directed the alpha source at this tiny little gold foil and he was trying to see what would happen to these alpha particles because he knew alpha particles were positively charged and he was trying to see what would happen to the alpha particles as he fired them down here he wanted to see whether they'd go straight through or whether the, or just see what would happen to see whether the, the results matched the plum pudding so let's go and have a look at the experiment that he did Pause. Okay, gentlemen, what I'm looking at here is the uh, FET model that I showed on the first page, which is really showing the, uh, what, we're showing Thompson's version of the version of the experiment that Rutherford did, or using Thompson's modelling. And what you can see is what really Rutherford, I suppose, might have been expecting if the plum pudding was true. Here we are, we're looking at, we're at 10 to the minus 10 scale here, so we're looking at an atom. So we're looking at an atom in Thompson's world, so late 19th century. And what Rutherford was expecting, if Thompson's model was correct, was that the alpha particles, which are positively charged, uh, we know what they are, we know what they're made of now, but we didn't know at the time, they're made out of two protons, just pause this very quickly. They're made of two protons and two neutrons. Now, obviously, we have more information than Thompson or Rutherford had then. So, uh, and what he was expecting was because the there is no particular bit of positive charge in here, these are electrons, and the electrons have a little bit of charge, but they're very small particles. He was really expecting all these alpha particles to just fly through pretty much unaffected now here is what actually happened now you can have a go on this you can change the numbers over here the amount of protons and the neutrons but i'm pretty sure you can recognize already that we've got a slightly different model of the atom this is the model of the atom that hopefully you already recognize we can see in the tiny nucleus in the middle of these atoms and we can see the electron shells which are come with the electrons orbiting right round. Now, I put trails on here so you can see what's going on. And hopefully you can see that the most common effect of there here is for these alpha particles to actually just more or less go straight through. Even on the scale of here, the scale of here is not totally correct because if you think about it, these, these nuclei here would be 100,000, the diameter of these would be also be, uh, you need to multiply by 100,000 to get the distance apart. So these are far too close based on the size of here. So really, in effect, we're massively exaggerating the amount of sort of um, interactions that happen here. But what you clearly can see, that if you follow a track through here, Unless they go very close to the nucleus, they actually go straight through. They actually go straight. Anything that goes in, in this region down here is going to fly straight through because it doesn't get affected by the nucleus. Now, let's just wait and see if we can get a, a, recent, a reasonably strong deflection and then I'll pause it. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, we'll stop it for that one. So here we can see what's happened here. Can you see how it's not been attracted towards the nucleus? It's been deflected away. Well, why would that happen? Well, what Rutherford came up with when he found out the experiment, he found out there was some being deflected. Was that led him to believe that there must be some sort of positive charge here deflecting the particles away? If I'll go to another, I'll go to a slightly different view of this one. Here's another slightly different view. Gives up just zooming up on the nucleus. And what you can see is really that some of the particles that go close get actually deflected. Now, if I make the nucleus larger, I'm going to do that now. 
gonna make it really large and let's see if we can get some there we go now we're actually getting some not only are we getting some deflections but we're getting some rebounds and these rebounds really tell us two things why would something rebound because the, the rebounds are key you would only get something to rebound if it came if it was if it was being uh, repelled from the nucleus if the nucleus was negative it might deflect it a little bit as it went through as it dragged it around but it would never actually repel it it would actually attract it towards it but these alpha particles that are coming in are coming up and they're being re rebounded away which tells us two things one that the nucleus must be positive but it also tells us that the nucleus must be very massive in that true traditional physics sense of the word it must have a large amount of mass because if the force of the repulsion that's pushing the alpha particles away well if the that would be equally on the nucleus so the nu nucleus must be a very large particle or otherwise it wouldn't be the alpha particle being pushed away it would be the nucleus being pushed away okay welcome back to uh, this main presentation so uh, we just finished off about why the experience why the scientists were going to do this what do they want to find out well they were checking to see or they were investigating the veracity of the plum pudding model and as we remembered they were expecting really most of them to go all the way through so here's a, a summary of the the equipment that we've already looked at there's the alpha source so get these in now if you haven't got them in from before the gold foil and the detector and fundamentally what they did was they moved this detector around to different positions and as I've seen, I put in the different values, typical values that they got. So when they put the detector right in front, I mean, I just put a typical value in there. So you don't need to really, it would be a random experiment to some extent. It just depends how lucky they are. But the vast, 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 vast majority of the uh, alpha particles just bust straight through. When they put it through at different angles, they found that a small amount, more than they were expecting from collisions with electrons, uh, seemed to go through these slightly larger angles. And that actually led Rutherford to place one of the detectors behind. And this is where he detected some of the uh, rebounds of some of the alpha particles. So, label and complete the results in the diagram. Summarize what happened. So this is really, all we're doing in here is putting in our own details of actually what Rutherford observed without any explanation. So most of the alpha particles, they just went straight through without any deflection. Some of the alpha particles, well, a small amount underwent deflection. A very, very tiny percentage of the alpha particles well, some of the alpha particles, very small amount, actually rebounded back in the opposite direction. Now, we can make all those comments, and Rutherford can make all those comments without giving any explanation of why it hurt. So, but fundamentally, we're going to move on now and, and try and just do, answer a question uh, about what happened. Just so you know what this is, this is in the presentation. Uh, I put this in because this this is a little model I can do at the back of the room. And this is sort of like a symbol shaped uh, little cone, like a little mountain up here. And what actually happens in this is that I get asked the students to fire bouncy balls or marbles at here. And what you'll find is a lot of them just miss this symbol or go straight through. A small amount of them might just hit here. And the closer they are to here, this curved shape, they'll bend off. And a very small amount... I mean, it's almost, it, it, it's good because it shows how difficult it is to do. If you hit with totally the right speed and then you hit here and then you can get a rebound coming back in the same direction. So that's a nice little physical demonstration of the model. So here's what we're going to answer. We're going to answer this question here, explanation of alpha scattering exper experiments, referring to the diagram and in full sensors, explain how the results can be explained of the nuclear model of the nucleus, i.e. not the plum pudding, which this experiment sort of disproved or said it wasn't up to the job. We're going to label the alpha particles being unaffected, deflected and repelled and bounced back. And there's a little extension task as well. So here you can see these ones. See all these ones. These are the alpha particles. 
This is the gold. Gold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gold nuclei uh, atoms, and the nuclei down here. Now most of the these are the undeflected ones going through straight through. Here's the one that got, went too close and got deflected, and this one must have come in and hit the nucleus and come out. So make sure that's labelled. So what do I want here? I want you to now sort of explain so I can talk through this one more time and then you can go on and complete the rest of the questions in this in this in this section. So explain referring to the diagram in full tense, explain how the results can be explained by the nuclear model. Well, first of all, why did most of them go straight through? Most of them went through straight through because the atom is mainly empty space. Remember the size of the nucleus compared to the atom? It is one hundred thousandth the, the size. So most of the atom is in mostly empty space, so the other particles went straight through. Well, why did some of them deflect? Well, some of them deflected because they went close to the nucleus. That indicates that the nucleus either has a positive or perhaps a negative charge. Could be indicate that because if it was an indicate if it went close to it and it was negative it could be pulled towards it and if it and if it went close to it, it could be deflected away um but the most interesting fact is this one how can we explain the reflection of the alpha particles well this reflection requires us to make two statements first of all it must have bounced into something that was positive. Because if it wasn't positive, it wouldn't have been deflected back. I mean, if it was if it was positive, it could possibly have stuck to it, or it could have been pulled towards it and deflected and carried on its way. But there's no real explanation of why it would be deflected back if it wasn't positive. So there must have been a, a lot of positive charge somewhere what else does this mean? Well, really, it also means that whatever was at the centre, whatever had the positive charge, also was very massive in the physics sense of the world. Because if it wasn't massive, then it wouldn't have, it, w it wouldn't have been deflected back. It would have maybe pushed on and just pushed the other thing out of the way. So the, the other thing that it bounced into was very massive. So go ahead now. You've got this to answer here. So you're going to answer this question there. Then you've got a couple of past paper questions talking about there. And that you've got to carry on with that one. And you can do that. It's a nice little extension task if you want to do some research on that. And once you've finished all those, if you want to get the mark scheme off me for those questions, or you want to ask me about the questions in class next time we're in, then that would be great. Okay, thanks for your hard work on this lesson. Make sure you answer those questions, this particularly this one, in nice full sentences, also nice full sentences here as best as possible, and we can go through them in class.